So as a continuation from the last segment that we had, uh, in this case, we are going to look into uh, the dependent and uh, independent variables. We are still uh, working on our introductions to our functions and graphs. So it is very, very important uh, that we understand these basics. What exactly is it that we are referring to? So let's start with variables. When we are in algebra, if we get back to our algebraic expressions, uh, remember we dealt uh, with some algebraic expressions in our N2 AX squared uh, plus BX plus C as a quadratic expression, where A, B, and C represent what we refer to as constants. A, B and C are constants. Those can be replaced by numbers. We can have this as a 2x squared plus 3x plus 7. But x is not replaced, x squared not replaced. We are referring to the letter that is not replaced by any value those are what we refer to as what variables variables so in our functions we'll be having this now not as a just uh, a normal algebraic expression you'll be given this as an equation now y is equal to mx plus c where M and C are constants which can be substituted such as maybe 2x plus 3. Where we can have a replacement for that M, a replacement for that C. Those are constants. Where Y and X are part of the equation, those are variables. We do not have a substitute for that. y is equal to x squared y is equal to x squared like that y and x so those variables are the ones that are actually may be used in most cases we use them to find the constant maybe you do not have the constants yeah you have to find those constants by substituting a certain pair of points, a certain pair that you be given, any pair that you be given from what? From the points. That's the only way where we can say now there is a substitution which is made from an ordered pair of X and Y. But otherwise, there is, no, there is no replacement for that. We cannot have it in any form where it is now 2 is equal to 2 times 3, uh, plus 3 like that, when now we say it's an equation, it cannot be. It always be y is equal to. So those are variables x and y. So when we now call or refer to a variable to be dependent now, what is it that is happening when it is a dependent variable? It means it is it depends from the word dependent. It depends. It depends on another variable, on another value. It depends on what is from another value. So that is the condition there. All right, so here we are saying is a variable, in this case, whose values or value is uh, a variable whose value depends on the value of what? Of another. Of another. A variable that is given so this is the case it depends on another so the output 
always depends on the input. X is our input. Remember. So the output depends on the input. For the value that you put here as your X value, it affects the output. For the value of X that you put, it always affects your output. So when we are given an equation of Y in terms of, of x it means y is depending on what on x for each x as your input it will affect the outcome which is our output value so in that case y depends on x if the input uh, if we are given y in terms of x it simply means our uh, y there is the one that depends on what on x this is our situation. I input the x value from a given equation y is equal to x squared. For the value of x, which is 1, that I put here, it gives me or affects uh, the value of what? The value of y. That is the condition. The exact value on the output from the input so it is the the, the 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 opposite case when we say this one is now independent right it is now the exact uh, opposite so when it is now an independent uh, variable it is that variable or the value that do not or does not depend on the what? On the values of another variable. So when it is like that, it is now independent. Opposite of what? Dependent. All right. So this one is a variable. So we can simply say we can simply write it down as a, a variable whose value. All right. Whose value does not. So this one, it does not depend, does not. All right, let's indicate this one. Uh, does not, all right, depend on the values, on the values of another variable. So this is our case. So... It is your input there. The input does not depend on the output. The input it is one, it, it is you are choosing to say, let the input be this. Then you will see what's the output. So the input is on its own. All right? The input always on its own. So X becomes what? The independent. So when we are given y is equal to mx plus whatever equation that we have there, but y is written in terms of x, x will be the independent variable. All right? So that is the case uh, between this uh, uh, two. The input. Remember, input is a choice. You choose to say, okay, uh, let me take from minus 1 up to 3. Let me take from minus 3 up to 4. It is not as of the output. You do not decide to say, let the output be this from this. Uh, the output is always as a result of the input. Always as a result of. Thus, it depends on the input. So that is uh, what you simply need uh, to understand in your syllabus. And another part that we are going to look into uh, the, as we are talking about these variables, the dependent and independent variables, where are they taken from, from our functions? So let us also consider uh, the part of our functional notation. How can we present our functions? A notation which can be 
used when I am presenting a certain algebraic graph y is equal to 2x minus 3. Y is written in terms of x, so you can write as f of x, function of x is equal to 2x minus 3. So we are simply saying y represents or it is our f of x. We can write as g of x, it can be m of x, it can be k of x, whatever presentation. So in terms of our understanding, we're going to use what? f of x, function of x. function of y is this so for this presentation it helps us now to understand if i am given to find f of zero from there f of in place of x in place of x substitute zero in place of what in place of x so if f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, therefore f of 0 means 2 times in place of x, I'm going to put what? A 0 there. Minus 3. So that's our f of 0. Can be simplified. So 2 times 0, that's 0 minus 3, which is what? Which is minus 3. We have our output. If x is 0, then y is minus f of y is. So it's actually a point where x is what? Zero. Y is minus three. Remember, a point, an ordered pair made of x and y. It's actually a point that you have there. It's actually a point. So you need all these basics, guys, to understand your functions later on. So let us just uh, consider one or two examples on our functional notation. Uh, that will be the last part. Then we shall look into the inverse functions and uh, relations. What are the inverse relations and functions in our next class? So let us just say we are given, uh, for an example, we are given a certain function, uh, given f of x, given that uh, f of x is equal to uh, 4x minus 7. So you can give any, any expression. Let's say we've got 4x minus 7, all right? Then from there, we are asked to find, all right, let's say from this, we are being asked to find f of 0, all right, f of uh, 1, f of a, f of uh, a minus 3, okay? They can give you any part, anything. So f of x, that's how y is equal to, it can be given like this, y is equal to this, then they ask you this. In place of x, you put what is f of inside the bracket. All right? So let us start with f of 0 there. So f of 0 in place of x, we are going to substitute a 0 there. So that's 4 times 0 minus 7. All right? Uh, that's a 0 there, 4 times 0 minus 7, which is minus 7. All right? Uh, f of 1 in place of x, put 1 there where you see x. So that's 4 times 1 minus 7 all right 4 times 1 that's 4 minus 7 which is what uh, negative 3 f of a in place of x put a there all right so f of a in place of x we are going to put a so that's 4 times a minus 7 4 times a that is 4a so it cannot change that one it's just going to remain as what uh, 4a minus 7 all right, f of a minus 3, in place of that x, we are going to put what? Uh, a minus 3. That is what it means. So that's a minus 3 in place of x. Then we've got minus 7. So we can simplify this one. Uh, let's see. Expand the bracket uh, by distribution. So we're going to distribute by what? Uh, by 4 each and every term. So 4 is going to multiply each and every term. 4 times a, which is uh, 4a, 
uh, times minus 3, which is minus 12 minus 7. So at the end, it was going to give us 4a minus what? Minus 19. Just like that. So as we can see, that is how these questions can be given as. They will give you a certain function. So knowing this, guys, is very, very important. It is the basics also of your differentiation, all right, from uh, the first principles where you'll be dealing f of this, f of 1, f of, f of this, f of uh, x. Then we've got uh, f of x plus h. Remember those uh, from your uh, derivatives, first principles. It is that idea of the functional notation, understanding how to present your functions. All right, let us just consider the last part. Uh, given this, given our f of x, which is equal to x squared uh, plus x plus 1, uh, from this f of x, we want to simply find uh, 1 or 2 here. Uh, f of 0, f of 1, f of a, all right, guys, just the basics, then you just go through uh, some other questions, all right, so the first one, f of 0, it means in place of x, we are going to put what, a 0 there, so that's a 0 squared, plus, in place of x, we put a 0 there, plus 1, all right, so that was going to simply give us a 1, 0 plus 0 plus 1, okay, then f of 1, in place of x, simply put what? Simply put 1. So that's 1 squared plus 1 plus 1. Okay? So that's it. 1 squared is 1 plus 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is what? Which is 3. Then f of a in place of x, simply put what? Simply put a there. Wherever you see x, you are going to put a. So it is a squared plus a plus what? Uh, plus 1. So a squared, guys, was just going to remain as a squared uh, plus a plus what? Plus 1. So that is uh, the idea. They can give you any anything there. You just substitute whatever that you're given. Is it a negative value? Uh, then you simplify further uh, depending with uh, the type of question, all right? So that is how these questions uh, might be given as just for the basics of our uh, derivatives later on. Like I said, we are going to have something like that later on our derivatives. So let's also look into f of x plus h. They can give us like that. f of x plus h, what does it mean? In place of x, just simply put x plus h. So it's x plus h squared plus in place of x, we're going to put what? x plus h plus what, plus one. So that is what it simply means. Then you expand, uh, collect your like terms, and so on. Remember, uh, remembering that if we are given uh, a plus b, a plus b squared, it is equal to what? a squared uh, plus 2ab plus b squared. So guys, it is the same thing even when you are given x. x represents a, so it's going to be x squared plus 2ab, that's 2xh, or 2hx, it's up to you, uh, 2xh or hx, all right? Plus the b squared, which is the h squared at the end, so that's h squared, and here we can expand uh, the bracket by 1, which will be outside of what? The bracket, so here simply 1, multiplying our bracket, which is not going to affect anything, 1 times x, that's x, uh, 1 times h, that's h, all right, then plus 1, which is at the end. We do not have any like term there. We do not have any part where we can add or subtract. So we're going to just leave uh, this as it is uh, representing what? Our f of x plus h. So you see, it is from those functions, then you'll be like, what is, where is this part coming from? It is a topic which was supposed to be done uh, on its own. So let us do um, a lot of questions as an individual. Just try to understand this, guys. It's going to help us uh, later on as we shall be working with uh, other topics also, as I mentioned before, in our derivatives. So we shall see in our next class uh, working with the inverse functions and uh, relations.